welcome to my very first ever YouTube video. Comments below about how I can improve this, what I'm doing wrong, or any questions about my first ever video. Thank you. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel Endeavour. This is uh, my review of my new Hyundai EFI 2500 watt SEI generator. In the box, I've got a set of manuals. Come out the bag. I get the comprehensive manual. I get the supplementary manual a warranty card from Hyundai, a quick start guide and for some reason a voucher. It also comes with a 13 to 16 amp uh, plug top, plug a boat into it. Got a starter kit, it comes with a set of keys plug, um, 12 volt charging cable, oil drain, spark plug remover, screwdriver, clips and flat, a screwdriver holder, a spare battery clamp, and finally, 20 amp fuse for the engine start battery. That's one side. Keep those ones out. generator came with a 13 amp to 16 amp socket, just this one. As far as using it for the boat, this is the fly lead. Simply plugs into the 13 amp socket, it'll give me 13 amp through the 16 amp point. There we go. I think that's covered everything. Again, electric key start. If you want to start it on manual, turn the key insert turn to start, use the pull cord, when you're finished with it turn it off, if it won't produce power hit the breaker, I think it's a 12 volt breaker, I'm not sure, yeah DC 12 volt breaker, below that you can use the charge lead which allows you to charge a battery off it, say boat battery, caravan battery or whatever, although in my case my boat has a 220 volt uh, mains charger pre-installed on it from Victron. If I use this, I'll get a maximum of 8.5 amps. If I go through the inverter, uh, through the inverter of Victron unit, I'll kick out about 30 amps max. Uh, there we go. This is probably ideal as it gets you out of trouble if you um, use your camper out in the field somewhere, the battery goes flat and you can't, you can't get it started and you don't have a big battery charger ready to charge from. This is probably ideal as a, an emergency get your home battery in case you took your camper out for a uh, trip out, parked up somewhere, battery went flat, can't get it started, this will get the car van started after an hour or so on charge. Um, yes, that's it I think. If ever you find the generator won't power up or turn on, you will find a small 20 amp fuse located on the cable under the same door. 
Do you know if it does come with a spare 20 amp spade fuse? Cheap enough to buy an eBay if you do run out of them. We were carrying a spare. This one doesn't have a bulb to pump with as it's an electronic fuel injection system and doesn't need it. I've also been informed by the seller that this switch also is not actually used on the electronic fuel injection system, which is what this one is, unlike the HY2000 or 3000, which does do something. Look. You see it comes with the 12 volt battery charging cable, which will produce 8.3 amps. Got my circuit breaker, my oil light, and my two UK 230 volt 13 amp socket with an earth terminal to ground to a earthing post. Now, it's giving me my amps, power wattage, time running, and the amount of fuel left in the tank, the low, warning, low oil warning light in the bottom corner. I've still got manual pull on the side as well. The reference, it measures approximately 56 to 57 centimeters long by wide right at the bottom. To about 30 centimeters deep by a height of approximately 50. 49 centimetres high. 49.50. Which is very important as I'm intending to fit it into a narrow boat. As a side note, this model doesn't have an eco switch or a remote control but it is 2,500 watt peak, apparently. <laughs> right, this is a quick look inside to see what's behind the panel. Under the six screws. This is just to show that the ignition key is in fact a five pin plug. So if you decide to do what I intend to do with it, which is to put another switch inside the boat, then I can simply disconnect this one and plug straight into here. Uh, the switches are about 15, 20 quid on eBay. Just plugs in and away we go. Tuck it back down out the way earthing pin here that needs to go to ground or grounding spike but on my boat it will go to the steel hull 
uh, probably through the um, galvanic isolator, although that's really just for um, shore power. As it's on the boat, and I'll just put it to the same thing anyway. Ignition key. Rev counter, instrument cluster, whatever. Two, two twenty volt plugs. We've got a brake, uh, sorry, breaker, twelve volt output. If I wanted to attach a USB point, take it from the black and positive from the twelve volt output. As USBs are maximum for about two amps, this will carry eight amps. As it vibrates, it could damage anything inside it. After wetting down with oil, any old engine oil will do. Pop the cover back on again. And redirect the Phillips screw. This is the location of the electronic fuel injection pump with a connector there. Obviously I've got a fuel filter which is the bright orange brushed aluminium one. Oil filler is right at the base. To undo it, turn anti-clockwise. Pull forward. To check level, just rock generator slightly back, and the oil should be just at the lip of the uh, threads. If level drops too low, the generator won't start, and you'll get an oil warning light. Reapply threaded plug tight but don't over tighten. If you decide to change the oil, you simply undo this plug anti clockwise, pop him out somewhere, take the adapter supplied with it in the box, 
thread this into the same thread so not to, sp so not to spill the oil inside the generator and tip the contents out. Should be able to use the screwdriver attachment just to tighten it up. Don't want it too loose that it will um, obviously dribble all over the inside of the, the engine. When finished, just tip it forward. When finished, unscrew it. And re check the oil level that it's just by the top of the lip of the thread. And redo up in a clockwise direction the plug again. Next, reinsert the base and do the two Phillips screws back up again. Again, trying not to over tighten, otherwise, you might damage the thread. Final place you'll go into is the top for the spark plug. Again, a Phillips screwdriver or screw required. Anti clockwise undoes the screw, standard thread. Cover pops off. There's the spark plug that just pulls off to change the plug. To remove, pull the plug up and to the left. For reference, it uses a NGKR spark plug, code number CR6HSA. Again. Next, we just reapply the cover again on the top after changing the plug. Fill it the screw back in again, again, trying not to over tighten. But not too loose that it will vibrate undone. Just having a quick look under this rear cover. Probably nothing worth looking at. This is the exhaust spark arrestor. It's a bit of a rubbish tape measure, never mind. Just pop this off a second. These pop off, so careful not to drop, lose them. Don't do it when it's hot. Exhaust science comes off, or exhaust spark arrestor comes off. Size of exit pipe is about 2.2 centimeters. Inside holds about two. Point two point two two point three. With a uh, and about uh, one, two, three and a half centimeter gap between the two threads. Just reattach the spark arrestor. Reattach the two little tiny threaded screws. Hold it on. There we 
again. Nice. Again, don't over tighten. Reattaching the rear cover, making sure not to trap any foam or anything else in it. Redrop the four Phillips threads. and tight but not too tight that you strip the threads again. There we go. Right. That's about 20 minutes to half an hour. Let's see if it starts. Try the manual start. Ready? <laughs> Buzzing door. in the key. Try that manual again. Uh, not the easiest to start on manual, however it's a lot easier than my last generation. It took about 30, 40, 50 pulls. I can actually talk over it at the same time because I couldn't do my last one. Running a 58 decibel at 7 meters, but it's such a lower level note that it's not so bad. Today I'm going to do a little update on my previous video on my little generator. Some would suggest that this generator might have been having trouble starting when I pulled it on manual because I've been, it had previously been heated up on the key. So I'm going to try and start it on the manual only. Power on. Fuel pump is running. Primed. And now let's see how easy it is to start. In that case, yes, it was actually quite easy. There we 
go. If it's cold, it starts very easily on the full chord. However, after starting it on the key, letting it run for a few minutes, and then starting it on the full chord, it was quite hard to start. But as you can tell, this has been stood in the garage now for the last, the last video of it, which is about a week, and it started really easily on the pull chord, second pull. Turn the vacuum on. As you can tell, there's very little voltage fluctuation in the top. It starts very quickly, showing me my amps I'm drawing, the watts that are used. The uh, hour meter, how long it's been used for the generator, fuel remaining in the tank. My next test, I was asked to put a bigger load on it, as the last one was only 500 watt. This time I'll be putting a 1300 watt Dyson on it. So, let's see what happens. Fuel pump running. over. We'll now start the vacuum cleaner at 1300 watts and see what the power readings do. the battery compartment. Battery is charged when the generator is running. 
access is just by undoing this one screw, popping the cover off. You just need to undo this little clip by pushing down and pulling out. Sliding the little clip off. And just pulling the battery out. Only really needs if you charge it up occasionally, but the generator should set, should charge it itself. When reinserting the battery, make sure to get the correct uh, cable the right way around. Black is going to my negative. Red is going to my positive. Stay connectors, just press on. Grab the bungee in the back. Lift it out of the way. Slide the battery in. Making sure the clip goes between the live and negative term terminal. I've actually got oil on my hands, so it's becoming a bit slippery. Pull down and press over. I'm not sure if you can see it, but if you press this one down and pull out, this is the strap. Simply pull down and pull over the hook to secure the battery. This is sprung loaded, so if you let go, it might shoot back inside the unit when it's a bit fiddly. Recommend you slide to a little loop and slide the cables back inside out of the way, making sure there's nothing hot for it to rub on or any sharp edges that could wear through any of the cables. Yes. Reattach the plate, followed by the fillet screw back in a clockwise direction, try not to over tighten. This is the fuel shutoff valve, off this side, on towards the bottom. So that's off, and that's on. However, the seller did say that this doesn't do anything on this particular model, which is fuel injection, as it's not a gravity-fed tank. Just as a side note, this is my new generator. This is my previous generator, which I've had for about 14, 15 years, uh, although in that time frame I have had to replace the pull cord on it uh, three times because they wear out. This unit only cost me 50 quid from B&Q, although promptly the price dropped to 40 quid, so it's a really cheap little two-stroke generator. This thing smokes like a trooper when it's running. This is fairly clean and smokeless. This doesn't have a sump, so no matter how you store it in the boat, it doesn't matter, it won't upset it, whereas this one has an oil sump and has to be upright. This one is a pain to start. Uh, plus you've got to mix the fuel in it, which is one part to two part stroke oil. One part petrol to two stroke oil. Um, also came with a um, emergency cable. But what I would say is this is suitable for running my centre of electronics like my computers, TV, anything on the boat that might use sensitive electronics and uh, computers, this would probably damage it. This is not a, sta this is not a stable current. Uh, this is a clean 50 hertz unit, although if you want it in a stage, you can get one that will be 60 hertz, I believe. Um, okay. Just for a laugh, we'll see how easy it is to start this one. It's been sat in the garage now for the last, um, I don't know, three months. 
switch it on, pull choke to choke. I start crank, oh, and the fuel on, sorry. Fuel on on the side. Nearly. This one is 850 watt, and this one is 2500 watt. This one I've had for 14 years has been extremely reliable. This one I've had for two weeks. This one I've, um, is suitable for running power tools and uh, lights and that sort of thing, as long as it's under 800 watts. Uh, this one is suitable for running electronics like computers. Yes, this. Yes, this one is suitable for electronics like computers, plugging your iPhone in, that sort of thing in. This one would probably be quite harmful to those sort of electronics. That's why I bought one of these to put onto my new narrowboat and not use this one. This would be good for um, using the two cables for charging your batteries or that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know. Both these generators do have grounding points, so they should be grounded out. Uh, this one is pull cord only. This is pull cord, as you can tell, starts fairly easily and is also the electronic key ignition start. Uh, earlier, I was trying to do a comparison and both of them stopped to function. This one wouldn't stop to function. I thought it was a fuel problem. It wasn't. It turned out to be a, a bad spark plug. Change the plug generator started, it's fine again. Uh, this one, I've never changed the plug on it and it just keeps going, although I have had uh, three replacement pull cords on it in 14 years. Um, what else? Then I really, oh this one if I wanted to use it on this one, I can't use a electronic key on this one. I can on this one. But this is fortunately uh, EFI, electronic fuel injection, and not just the SEI. No, SI. Yes, sir. Hyundai HY2000 SEI or HY3000 SEI 
these electronic key ignition that have manual chokes on the sides. So if I put a key in the in the um, boat with the two and three thousand HYs, I would have to run outside and move the choke to start and then push it back to, to stop and pump on the, elect the manual primer. On the EFI, electronic fuel injection system, which this one is, EFI 2500 SEI, electronic, uh, it's switch with it, it? EFI, electronic fuel injection, this one doesn't have an, a manual uh, choke. You just turn the switch to on, which is in that position. It buzzes for about 20 seconds once it primes the fuel, adjusts the choke, you turn it on. It may or may not start this time because the battery's a bit flat. Okay, so the flat battery, flat, battery's flat. We'll start on the pull cord there. Run with. A lot easier than that one. Um, so yes, it starts easily. This is a bit of a stubborn thing to start. Although in the last test just then it started after about uh, pool 20. Um, what else? That's about it I think. This one's safe for lights and drills, this one's good for everything. Both need to be grounded out on the boat. Both of these grounding posts would have to go either to the steel hull or to through the um, uh, galvanic isolator, which in which this case doesn't actually make any difference, not isolating a boat from anybody else. <coughs> but in this case I'll be plugging it straight into the 220 volt plug input on the generator. <coughs> okay. <coughs> and this one, I will simply plug it into the 220 volt 16 amp input on the boat, which will go through the galvanic isolator and use the boat's Victron Blue 30 amp charger to charge the batteries. Whereas if I use the charging cable that came with it, it would only charge 8.5 amps. Um, that's it. Right, thank you for watching my rather long-winded generator review. Uh, if you like what you saw, then um, please give us a thumbs up. Otherwise, comment down below. And we'll see you next time for another stimulating narrowboat related video. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs>